The dangers of Zandvoort sadly bore fruit for a few unfortunate drivers. The challenging Dutch circuit certainly got some people's seasons off to a poor start. Unfortunately for them, there's little respite in the following round. Circuit Gilles Villeneuve offers little runoff and severely punishing walls right next to much of the course. If flirting with the edges of control seemed dangerous last time, it's going to be ten times worse today. Will attrition play a bigger factor than raw speed? We'll find out soon as we get ready to watch round two of the PRL Formula 3 Series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esports Network. Hi, I'm Joe Peek, and with me in the booth is Nick Schmeg. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by W Beer. Now that we've hyped up the difficulty of this Canadian track, maybe it's better to temper expectations by showing exactly what it's like. Let's do, ju do just that and hop on board with our track guide. All right, we're in the GSRC Formula 3, so let's do a lap around Montreal. The Senna S is a very tricky first set of corners. While passing is possible, if you take it in too deep, you'll severely compromise your line through the hairpin portion. Try to get back on the power, but be careful because the momentum of the rear could swing it the rest of the way around, sending you into the wall to the right. After this is 3 and 4. This is an underrated corner because it really forces you to get close to that outside barrier if you want to be fast. Then there's the flat-out turn 5, where you want to hug the right side. That's because that's where you want to be for the racing line and braking into 6. Sometimes drivers might try passes into here, but it's surprisingly difficult to get it done. Honestly, it's important to ensure you get a good run off of 7 since it takes you onto the riverside stretch. Drivers are likely to try and set up an overtake if they think they've got a run on you. Under the bridge, you'll slam on the brakes and swing it into 8 and 9. Avoid climbing the tall white curb so that you can confidently reapply the power. Once again, make sure you don't send the car careening into the wall. Finally, we've got the only braking zone that isn't into a chicane, Le Pingle. That'll make everyone hungry to try and make a pass into here, but the bigger danger is getting onto the throttle too heavily and spinning the car around. There's good reason to try and push the limit with that too, because you're now flying along the rowing lake. This backstretch is the longest acceleration zone on the track and offers your best chance to get past your opponent. It culminates at the braking for the final chicane, which leads you into the notorious Wall of Champions. Respect the curbs, be careful not to smack the wall, and hopefully as you take it to the line, you've now finished a lap around Montreal. Never gets tire, tiresome watching a street circuit lap from on board a car and you get an idea of how narrow things are. But Nick, let's hope that we don't have too many retirements today at this track because it does put on some good racing. Yeah, just like last week, they're definitely going to be facing challenges uh, like at Zandvoort. Maybe the only major similarity between last week's Dutch circuit and this week's track in Montreal is the fact that the backdrop includes a body of water. The drivers will have to transition from tricky banked turns to tonight's completely flat lack of elevation. And while that sounds like it would suit these cars better, they're going to have to watch out for the killer curbs here. Chicane after chicane will create a tricky situation, especially in the first few laps on cold tires. But hopefully, the drivers are going to navigate the 14 turns and 4.3 kilometers cleanly. And Joe, even if they do successfully get to the first lap, we have 45 grueling minutes ahead of us tonight. It's definitely going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. This series tends to put on a good show no matter where they are. But uh, this show is, of course, brought to you by Ninja Trader. Ready to compete against the financial markets? Supporting over 60,000 users across the globe, Ninja Tra uh, Trader provides award winning trading software and brokerage services. Ninja Trader is always free to use for advanced charting, backtesting, and trade simulation. Visit ninjatrader.com to get started with a risk free trading simulator and start tracking your performance. This series is also brought to you by Butt Kicker. Butt Kicker products add an incredible immersion and realism to any game. Feel every nuance and truly put yourself in the driver's seat. Check them out at thebuttkicker.com. Now, Championship has points on the board now, so let's take a look at where they sit. David Holland back up to the top once again. Greg Seitz still trying to chase him down, still trying to beat him out on track. And he's done so a couple times, but it's been a minute. And Greg certainly is probably going to be in a hustle to try and prove that he can beat David at some of these tracks. Saroy on home ground comes in in third place with a nice podium last week. And then you can see Kero and Green round out your top five. Naturally, 
After one round, things stay very tight in the points. We also have a team's championship, Nick, and why don't you run us down on exactly how that's going? Yeah, it's just uh, after one race so far as Anvort, uh, just a one point difference between Vantage Azuro and Rust Racing Iron there between first and second. Uh, but after that, Lavoie Motorsport and Rust Racing Steel both tied for third place. They're going to have to sort that out amongst themselves uh, for that podium position as Vantage Rosso, uh, who did very well last season, is 20 points back right now in fifth. They're looking for a nice rebound tonight. And then, of course, if we have viewers who haven't watched before, welcome. Uh, here's what you're in store for. We are in round two, as we mentioned, and of the 10 rounds, they actually get one drop week in these points. Now, in that, you have to remember that the drop week cannot be the final round. So once they get to the finale, round 10, you have to show up or else you get a zero. 45 minutes for the race, as we mentioned earlier, and it is open setup in this series. With these open wheel cars, that can be incredibly important to finding speed and also finding comfort. Now, they have some penalties that they dish out. If you get 11 incidents, you get a, a drive-through penalty. And if you get 20, you now have a disqualification. So uh, drivers will literally disappear off the track if they hit 20. It can be easy to get those off tracks in some of these chicanes, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a few drive-throughs as the race went on. They also have the bonus point for pole, fastest lap, or three incidents or less. There's no spare car if you get any damage. You have to come in and get that repaired and wait for the team to bang away at that carbon fiber. Now, once again, you're watching this on the iRacing eSports Network. Make sure and subscribe when you get the opportunity. Very easy to do so. If you scroll below this video here on YouTube and you see a big red button that says subscribe, click that and you won't miss a moment here on IESN. Currently qualifying is underway and David Holland once again on the pole I'm seeing, Nick, it is by quite a wide margin, too. Rod, er, uh, Greg Seitz and Rod Clenard have a ways to go to try and catch up to him. Yeah, it looks like almost half a second right now uh, sits Seitz back there. He's got a little bit of toe right now behind Daniel Barnett. That might help him a little bit. Uh, like I said, very flat track here, so the toe definitely going to help them close up the gap when it goes comes into the turns. But the turns and the chicanes here really were, that's what's going to make or break uh, all of your laps. So we watch David Holland continue on on his qualifying. About seven minutes left, so still time as a big slide coming out of Lapingle for, for David Holland. Clearly, he is on it and hustling this car. At number 18, now getting a nice little toe down the rowing lake as Sheldon Rosenbaum is the one in front of him. He's just going to pull off to the side, so he's not getting in his way. Holland is going to be able to complete this lap. Let's see what he can put down here, if that helped him at all. He definitely pushes it right to the edge, almost clipping that barrier on the wall of champions. And that 129.7 as his fastest lap, unfortunately, does not improve as he seems to have had an off track somewhere that time. Yeah, not much uh, runoff room here either on the off tracks. Uh, of course, we don't look at a street course often as a place to rack up those 1x off-track points. So in terms of those drive through penalties and the uh, uh, disqualifications, they, they are really going to have to incur some car contact. But the walls here are so tight, uh, just not a very forgiving track at all, like you mentioned, uh, when it comes to those off-tracks. Just just enough on the chicanes where uh, you might get a slowdown penalty as well, which they're also going to have to walk, watch out for. To watch Crane Foos start a new lap here, sitting in eighth place. Checking to see if we've got any major players coming to cross the line. Currently, uh, most everybody is... Actually, I see Raymond Day coming through. He's in 12th place, the 77. Looks like he's got a clear track. Last lap did not count for him, so I'm wondering if he's on his first time lap back. Nope, doesn't look like it, because that one was a null and void. So the Vantage car continues on around. Switching over to 21st place, Eduardo Gock now. Make that 22nd because somebody went quicker than him. I didn't quite see who pushed him downwards. He improves anyways, and that last lap is a 31-2, but he stays in 22nd, so it wasn't enough to jump up the order. You know, the one thing that I am wondering, too, especially with this new damage model on these cars. is Boy, Holland's still pushing. We just moved the cameras to him as he was coming across the line. But this is an outlap, so I wonder if he's just trying to get those tires warmed up. Instead, we've switched back to Cranefoos, who is about to cross the line. 
This one not going to be quicker. He's about a tenth slower than his fastest, so he's got to continue on. But I was going to say, uh, Nick, that the the one thing that I'm worried about with this new damage model is the the curves around here. I'm wondering if we might see a few wings knocked loose or maybe suspension failures just uh, with some of the more taller curves in a couple places. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the walls on the side and the, the sausage curbs here, it's going to be interesting. And along that, you have the tire model, which is going to produce some really sketchy situations on the first lap, especially. Uh, I'm really worried about the stack up, the domino effect, and all of those wings getting clipped just by car contact as well on the first lap, especially turns one and two. Really slow anyway getting through there, but they're going to have to be very careful in the opening laps. Certainly, this is a track that's notorious for those uh, opening lap melees. So watch Kevin Santana. Does he improve? No, it looks like he was on an out lap because that was just a 144 that he just put down. So maybe still getting heat in those tires. Speaking of which, it's actually pretty cool here today. Uh, fitting since we are in Montreal up in Canada. It's only 71 degrees Fahrenheit on the track surface. And just to make matters worse, look at the, the wind out there, Nick. That's just... That's uh, not super bad, but a little crazy in a, a, a winged car. That's not a good thing. Yeah, hopefully they have enough downforce not to really throw that off too much. But yeah, it's just throw another variable at them tonight and see if they'll be all right with that. Partly cloudy, like you said. Um, so a little bit cool. It might take them a little bit longer to get some heat in the tires. But the wind, uh, not bad now. But if it does pick up any more, they are definitely going to have to pay close attention to that. One thing that we did miss is uh, Mauricio Quero uh, put himself up into second while we weren't looking, and he's coming around to finish another lap, but I think this one is an out lap because I saw him weaving back and forth. Indeed, that was a slow one for him. But he's got about half a tenth to make up to Holland, so that looks a little more feasible. Clenard, on the other hand, who comes out of the wall of champion in the 0-2-7, is coming to the line. He's only got two timed laps so far. What's this one going to be? Oh, it is quicker. It is a 29.8, and that's going to put him on the second row. Yeah, almost got himself up on the top three, Samuel Hermer. Uh, he also not too far back from Mauricio Caro, uh, an 8.86 on his lap. Uh, that was quickest. So the 11 also looking good as he's coming across the line soon. Let's see what this one holds. It is a 29.8, and that is not going to get him a position but he's now 49 thousandths away from Quero. And this is looking like it is going to be tight up at the front. We've currently got the top four separated by 0 0.13 of a second. Yeah, definitely a lot tighter competition than we saw in the beginning of qualifying. Uh, these drivers all have had multiple laps in the 15 minute qualifying session, gotten those tires up to heat, getting very competitive. That one, not an improvement for Holland, so he's going to keep going. This is Mark Ponick. Let's see. Nope, that looks like a slow one for him, so that's not going to knock him any higher. Meanwhile, Quero is coming towards the line, the number 79, just managing to get, uh, uh, just missing the podium, I should say, last round, and unfortunately, he's not going to go up to pole this time, as that was a little bit about a second slower than his quickest meanwhile we're watching green who looks to also be on a slow lap there Let's see who else is close to finishing let's go to sam hermer again the number 11. he's coming up to finish his lap once more and he's getting a nice toe olivier lego is in front of him and i'm wondering if maybe this will give him that little bit that he needs less than a tenth to try and improve he crosses the line and that's going to do it a 29-7 will put him into second place and five one thousandths off of david holland yeah great lap there he really did utilize that toe really well and that was just enough slipstream on the straightaway there on the front stretch to get him that i bet he used that on the back stretch as well uh really closed up the gap and like you said five one thousandths away from the pole that'll be it for him in this qualifying session with 40 seconds left now now, what's curious is the number 74 of Greg Seitz is already in pit lane, starting from seventh right now, doesn't have enough time to get back out there. And that is much farther down than usual of what we're used to seeing from Greg Seitz. I'm hoping that he knows what he's doing because I would have thought that he'd want to get back out there and 
try to pipe in as many laps as possible, get all the way up to the front and out of potential trouble. Quero not going to improve that time, but he has a ch one more chance to try and set a quick one. Who have we got to be the first to take the checkered flag? It might be Ian Green. No, he's just going to sneak across it in time and start a new lap. Now the checkered flag waves. It's going to be Kevin Santana in 15th, the triple six, coming through the final chicane and down to the line, Nick. Yeah, he has no slipstream, no toe, no nothing here to help him out. He had a third, it's going to be a 30.6, so just a little bit slower than his fastest lap. He's going to be remaining 15th here. Verity also not able to improve. Up next is going to be David Soroy, third place in the championship. Doesn't take the shortest line uh, to the start finish line. And in fact, that lap does not count for him as he crosses. Next is Christopher Richards, who's down in 25th. Crane Foos, Richards didn't improve. Ahead of Crane Foos, that is Lauren Sebastian. Sebastian doesn't do a better one. Crane Foos doesn't either. And then James David, looks like he must have had an off track somewhere. Not many people finding time on this final run. Mark Ponick coming across the Canadian, trying to impress at his home country here. He's going to be 21st, it looks like. And he did go quicker, so a 30.9 for him. Looks like Barnett had a spin in the final chicane, so that is it for him. Mitchell Ian Green will be the last one as he snuck across the line right as the checkered flag was going to wave. This one, wow, and he goes quicker, a 30.5. And that's going to give him two spots up to 15th. Nice last-ditch effort. Let's go through our starting grid for the day. It is going to be David Holland on the pole with Sam Herber this time, starting in second next to him. Mauricio Quero, he showed speed last time, just couldn't keep the consistency, so he'll be starting in third. Rod Clenard is going to be starting P4 with Stephen Verity in fifth position. David Soroy starting in sixth. Greg Seitz, P7 for him. And then Lucas ba Basigalupo, eighth in qualifying. Row five as Daniel Cranefus in the ninth spot. And then to his outside, it's David McDonald. Yeah, back then, after the top ten, row number six is going to go to Olivier Legault and Sebastian Prawl. Tyler DeZube and Raymond Day are going to be in row number seven. Fifteenth is going to go to Mitchell Ian Green there with that last-ditch effort we saw with Kevin Santana being bumped to 16th. 17th and 18th is going to be Alex Guyon and Joshua Daniels with Matt Quinn and James David rounding out the top 20. Get back to 21st, and it's Mark Honick who we were watching managed to get a little bit of time at the end. Brett Thurman in 22nd. Eduardo Gach starts P23. Then you got Wayne Pavlovich in the 24th position. Christopher Richards, P25 for him, followed by Lauren Sebastian in 26th, and then Sheldon Rosenbaum in 27th. Daniel Barnett is going to be 28th, followed by Andy Spicer in 29th, and David Blackwood in the 30th position. Rounding out the field, we had three drivers left to qualify. David A. Bear in the 16. Owen McLaughlin going to be 32nd and 33rd going to go to Paul Clist. Don Lee, Matthew Gunderson, Tyler Gore, and John Addison did not set times. They will be starting 34th through 37th. Looks like Addison's not in the session. Everybody else will be, so we'll have 36 starters as far as I can tell. Let's see if anybody is too chicken to try and... Uh, take the rolling start, and we'll start from pit lane to try and avoid the trouble that we tend to see down into the Senna S, that first chicane connected to a hairpin. Already they are lining up on the Rowing Lake straight behind the Porsche Pace car. We're getting ready to go for 45 minutes of racing here in round two of the PRL Formula 3 series. Drivers probably eager to get going, and some may be eager already for the checkered flag. I'm sure there's probably, Nick, some mixed feelings about showing up here today. Yeah, absolutely. After such a tough week last week in uh, Zandvoort, uh, knocked a lot of good drivers out early. They're going to be careful here, of course, but of course you, you want to go as fast as you can and as, as aggressive as you can from the start. Like you said, I don't see too many drivers starting from pit road. Actually, I don't know if I see any, uh, except maybe late in the field, but... Uh, Looks like everyone came to came to race today. Absolutely, that is awesome. 
that everybody has gridded up. Addison, as we mentioned, the only one that did not grid up because he is not here at this point. So it must have just had to take off for something else. You can see they're already trying to weave to get temperature into those tires. Temperatures have not changed really since we last looked. Still about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Real trick will probably be trying to weave their way through that last chicane to see if David Holland tries to go immediately after or if he waits and backs the the pack up behind him he's going to be well ahead of Hermer who is supposed to be next to him Hermer waiting actually where is no it was supposed to be uh, Mauricio who was supposed to be next to him is not there green flag is out and it's a very slow start for David Holland in fact it looks like Mauricio Caro, who was directly behind him instead is going to get a good jump on him going to go around the outside into the first corner a little bit of three wide behind him most everybody managing to snake their way through, but then it scrunches together and we got a little bit of contact. The car tipping sideways, gets back going. Another spin, otherwise we are clean. Holland was up on the curves, being very aggressive in the first turn. That was Sebastian Prue who got up sideways there, but everyone's still going. Now they head into the braking for turn five. A little bit of an attempt from Sites to get by Verity. That's going to work out side by side between Bascalupo and Cranefoos. Finally, they go single file as they come on the back stretch along the riverside. And it looks like it's going to be side by side once again because Cranefoos going on the attack on the inside of Bascalupo. But Lucas much braver on the brakes behind them. Who's that coming through? I think that is Raymond Day. Up at the front, our leaders have. Uh, have Quiero still ahead of Holland, ahead of Herber for your top three, but that might change coming off the pingle. Very close there at the front of the field. Everyone's stacking up here, and now we're going to see the toe here on the straightaway. Holland's got a good slipstream. He's already heading around the outside, coming up to the braking zone. It's going to be a game of chicken here on cold tires. Caro a little bit better, but maybe too good into the corner. He overshoots it, keeps out of the wall, but he loses one position and two positions down to third as Hermer takes advantage of the situation. Yeah, that worked out beautifully for David Holland. And when Samuel Hermer got around Caro, he couldn't have, he didn't have enough time to get any toe off the back of the 18 of Holland. So Holland's going to be out with a little bit of a cushion here for lap number two. I think we had a slowdown penalty for Daniel Cranefoos. He was very slow on the front stretch, letting a lot of cars go by. Already multiple drivers sitting in pit lane getting repairs. Goff, Richards, Barnett is in there. Uh, looks like Crew and Zube as well. Saw so Cranefoos had a little action there in three and four with Sebastian. It's Lauren Sebastian, but they got it sorted out. We take a look at back at the leaders. Once again, it is Holland leading Hermer, leading Kero, still gapping away from Soroy. I think things have settled down just a bit. So let's take a look at the replay on the start with what happened to Crew. Is he the one that spun himself or did he get some of the contact? I think he got a little bit of help here at the start. Let's take a look. It's a little wide there. Yeah, he got sandwiched and I think that was a little ghost contact if I'm honest. Kevin, was Kevin Santana to his inside. Yeah, it looks like a little bit net code there that sends him around, but he stayed straight. And actually a little bit later, he went off and there was a little bit bigger of a wreck between a couple of drivers as he was trying to gather himself up. Yeah, he could have had damage on the car and that might have caused the, the handling to be poor. And well, the mistakes beget mistakes. Meanwhile, uh, looks like Saroy and Seitz were in a close fight for fourth. Seitz has won out on that as he's now got himself yet one more position after starting in seventh. Very, very good start for the 74. Yeah, he came uh, in second place last week as Anfort. He's looking to, you know, do obviously he will do one better this week, but he's got a long ways to go. He's on the right path, though. Like you said, up three positions already, and this has been a very difficult start got a bit of a gap now up to the top three it's about two seconds you can see it there on screen that he has to make up before he gets to Kero both Kero and Hermer are close together but David Holland now that he's got the temperatures up to or the tires up to temperature rather I should say seems to have shot off into the distance already 
Yeah, things once again looking very good for David Holland. A little bit closer for second place. Uh, Caro has not let Hermer out of his sight and out of his toe. You can see them weaving all the way across the track on the backstretch. Yeah, Caro definitely staying in his tire tracks as they come out of the final corner. We're watching, this is Holland on screen. It's second behind them is where it's nice and tight. And you can see a flash of them in the background. So let's watch from on board. This is with Quero, the Chilean driver. He chases him down into turn three. Don't always or usually see passes into here, and he's too far back for it this time. Maybe possibly, oh, he gets awful close to the wall on the exit of four. This is, he is getting a little bit closer, you can tell, but like I said, passing opportunities, they are few and far between here. There's a couple very good ones and a lot of poor ones. Gaining a little bit. This is where the cars start to pick up speed and then hit the binders here for eight and nine. A bit of a slow exit off the corner, it looks like. This Hermer slightly cleaner over those tall curbs. So stretch it away at a critical moment. Down in 11th, I've been watching Olivier Lego a little bit because it seems like he's lost multiple positions recently. He's kind of stuck in the middle of things. He's got Santana in front of him, and he's going to try and get it back here as he takes a look to the inside of Lapingle, and he's going to get it cleanly, but can he get the shot off the corner? Looks good. I think he's going to have it, but now Santana's going to be back on his tail, getting a lot of draft here. He's going to shoot to the inside. Lego does not defend. Santana and that dark machine actually backs back into the racing line behind them. A little side-by-side -side action with Thurman and Green, but Green decides better. It would, did Thurman just get the wall there? Looked close. We'll he did indeed, yes. Here we go, here's the replay. Just late on the first apex. Oh! I can't believe he doesn't have more damage after that. Yeah, he, he must have hit that at the perfect angle with the tires just bounced right off of there. Even still, that if his suspension is damaged, that's going to make the day pretty miserable for him. He keeps going regardless. Looks like he's having some connection issues on top of his goals. As we head back up to eighth place, Raymond Day in seventh, or in eighth rather, in the 77, trying to hold off David McDonald. They come down in Lapingle. David takes a little bit of a peek, but doesn't make a serious attempt. This is where things will maybe get a little bit easier for the number six. He finds the toe coming down the rowing lake, but uh, does he have enough of it trimmed out? Because he is not right on top of that 77 now. Back up to second place, and Hermer was under attack from Caro into the wall of champions. They stay in position, and now Mauricio looks to the inside, down into the first corner, can't quite make it stick. And Hermer bounced off just a little bit there off the wall of champions. I believe he got a little bit of contact. That allowed Caro to close up but on the curbs. Caro getting very close himself there. That's going to help Hermer. There's only so long they can keep flirting with disaster like this. I feel like something's got to give with these drivers. Some of this, these fast players are maybe pushing it a little bit too hard. So he drops back slightly and gives way to about four tenths of a second, maybe getting a little bit of air on that front wing once again for the 79. Not even 10 minutes into this race, a lot of action has happened already. Let's jump back down to 15th because Brett Thurman looks like he might get passed by Cranefuse who's gone to his inside down into turn eight. Oh, but he overshoots the corner and he straddles the curb. Still, Thurman's going to have to try and go off to the side to see if he can go around, but no dice. And this is going to bring Josh Daniels into the mix as well. Thurman down to the right side as they break into Lapingle, but he touches him. They come together in tangle. And then around the outside, Josh Daniels says, thank you very much, a two for one. Yeah, great awareness there by Josh Daniels. 
uh, the driver out of the Virginia's club. He did a great job going way around the outside there. May have gotten an, an off track, but that's all right. He's going to stay uh, going the right direction. Yeah, just a nasty lock up there of the tires, and then they had to go through the infield, struggling to gain traction again. But they are back on their way, it looks like. And it's not going to take long for those incidents to rack up. And poor Daniel Cranefoos from that contact is actually in the pit lane. This is well too early for a scheduled stop. So he's probably going to be in for an extra time. And look at that wheel cocked. I think that car is crabbing right now. I suspect that he's got major suspension damage. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, that second place keeps teasing us. Hermer not willing to give it up, but he's also not gaining on Holland. He's nearly three seconds back from our leader at this point. And Mauricio Quero, who's been staying on his tail, has looked a few times, has maybe tried something a few times, but really hasn't had a good enough opportunity to make a serious attempt. That's Paul Clist in front of them. Just a lapped car. Let's see if he pulls out of the way for them. Well, whether he pulls out of the way or not right now, it's serving as a great toe for Samuel Hermer. Oh, it's going to be tight. Yeah, they closed up a lot in the braking zone, not expecting it. Thankfully, nobody gets into one another. Cliss going to stay off to the right side, letting both the leaders through. Yeah, still, you, like you said, Caro is closing up and then just can't quite get up alongside of him. Wonder if he's just saving a little bit of aggressiveness. They come now out and through three and four. Oh, man. Every time I watch Kerto go through that corner, I, it looks like he's going to slide into that wall, but he just keeps out of it. He closes down into turn six, though, and then out of seven, if he gets a good enough exit, this might be what he needs. Yes, indeed, as we ride on board with Herman right now. Now looking back at him, he immediately covers off the inside. He knows that he got a bad run out of there, and Caro is strong on the brake side by side. The rated nine almost shoves him out of the way. Hermer keeps it out of the wall, but rudely finds himself in third place. Yeah, a little bit of contact there to get the deal done, but Caro's going to get around. We see a replay here of Hermer's point of view. Maybe a little ghost contact there as well. Maybe a like. little, yeah. It's hard to tell if he reacted or if that was the car actually getting bumped. Uh, regardless, the damage is done. It's a second and a half back from Mauricio at this point. So he's going to have to do a lot of work to regain that ground. Behind him, uh, there is a battle both with Seitz and Soroy and Day and Verde, Verde. And it looks like Raymond's going to come out on top of that one into seventh. And they're going to have lap traffic to maneuver as well. Looks like they'll be able to get by here safely. Clist is trying to get out of the way, but he's parking well, it on okay. the apex. That's going to help David McDonald close up on Verity quite a bit. Yeah, that cost a lot of time for Steven. So now what looks like his teammate is on the back of him in the number six. Just behind them, they've also got Rod Clenard, who's currently in 10th, having started this race in 4th. He's fallen well down the order compared to the grid. He's trying to make up a little bit of time, and wow, it's looking good because he's caught up to them very, very quickly here. Oh, is, there is that a slowdown penalty for Verity? He's very slow, but he's going to squeeze him off to the side. Oh. Oh, I thought he was going to push him off into the grass. We were going to see yeah, it definitely there. It definitely looked like it was going to be close. They kept it clean. And right now, Clenard is going to find himself right in between McDonald and Verity. Now going to be chasing down uh, McDonald. He's got a little bit of a buffer, though, ahead of him. Let's go to Seitz, because Seitz is going to be overtaken by David Soroy. The 19 moves into fourth place. Nice move by him. Let's see if we can get a replay on that, because uh, it looked like Sites facilitated a little bit, but Saroy definitely with a great launch. Yeah, look at this. He's pulling him up, and I think Sites knows it. As soon as he moves over, he just kind of lets him through. Yeah, great maneuver, and like you said, it looks like a little bit of help there by uh, Greg Sites to let him through, but 
they are still going to be racing uh, pretty close. So, uh, Sites is going to be trying to chase him down. Let's head a little farther back to Olivier Legault. We were watching him earlier. He's got Verity with him. Steven in the number 10 with just a few car lengths between himself and the number 88. We ride on board now with Olivier, another of our Canadian drivers racing on home soil. Yeah, Verity has been really falling back through the field. We think we saw him get a slowdown a while ago, but still falling back after starting fifth place in this race. I wonder if he has a little bit of suspension damage, like you said, or something uh, that could be maybe faltering him. We'll need to come in for an early stop then, if that's the case. Up in front of them, is that McDonald and Clenard? Yes, it is. They're going side by side right now. And looks like Clenard got, uh, or has the spot rather, at least temporarily. McDonald's gonna duck back to the left side once again as he uses the toe to get a little bit more momentum. It's the latest of the late breakers who winds up being Clenard this time through the chicane, clean through, but a bad exit. And here we go again, because McDonald's once again with better speed climbs up next to him. Is he going to go for the attack? He looks to the inside. No defense from Clenard. In fact, he goes way too deep. He's off into the grass, and that's going to give up the spot. There goes McDonald's. Yeah, he really was way too hot into turn one there. Heated up the tires quite a bit. Slid quite a bit as well and caught it nicely. That could have been a lot worse for him. That could have been game over. But he's going to be still on his way. Warren Sebastian, unfortunately, with a problem. So the first real victim we've had from the wall of champions. We've had a, a touch or two, but this is the first we're going to get on camera. Actually, he might not be a victim. Let's watch here. I think he manages to stop it. Well, and then he collects it into the wall after the incident. Here we ride on board with the Benelux driver. Yeah, just like, uh, just like we saw with McDonald there, just way too hot. He would have he would have gotten away without damage, oh. but he runs into it twice, trying to get the car turned around. So the front wing, unfortunately, taking quite a bit of damage from those two bumps, and you can see he's now very slow in a straight line because here comes Gore trying to go on the attack in eight and nine, can't quite get it done. Yeah, the first bit of contact for Sebastian, not too bad, just a little kiss on the nose, but then he. I think he was just eager to get out of the way there because that's a terrible spot to be sideways. Flipped the right that's front true. pretty badly. Yeah, I guess that explains why he was in such a rush to try and get out of there. So as we jump up to Mitchell Green with Verity. Let's see, did they change the position? Yeah, they did down the, the uh, rowing straight. It was just an easy slipstream, so don't need a replay of it. So Santana and McLaughlin both take stops. This looks scheduled to me early in the pit window, but still within it. No tires from McLaughlin, it looked like. Yeah, these are two drivers, uh, Santana especially, that have fallen back a little bit at the start. McLaughlin actually uh, improved his position quite a bit. Qualified, actually, I don't know if he did set a qualifying time, uh, but he started outside the top 30 and avoided a lot of for a lap one contact and uh, scooted his way up about 10 positions. Yeah, a few drivers really making good inroads. So we watch this battle on screen. Rod Clenard not giving up quite yet on McDonald's. He may have lost his spot, but he's regained the ground. And now he's got the toe once again. Let's see who's got the wind trimmed out. It looks like it's going to be Rod Clenard because he gets to the inside. Last time, though, he went a little bit too deep into this corner and had a slow exit. This time, as he learned his lesson, that was a lot smoother. The 027 has got it. Looks like we had a pass here with Guyon and Verity. That's, is that another position lost for Verity, or is that? It is indeed. Did? Yeah, he lost it. Be interested to see when Verity takes his pit stop if he does have any damage. Might have some wing damage as well. Right on board. Let's see how the car's handling. This is one of the trickier sections here into three and four. Not too many crazy moments there with the steering wheel. Looks 
steady enough, it might just be lacking speed generally. Might have had a good qualifying setup, or he might have had a lot of toe on the qualifying lap as well. Yeah, to, he started true. up inside the top five. He finished 21st uh, last week at Zandvoort, but had some damage there. I mean, while going back to David Holland, we talked about the gap earlier. Well, it's now extended to five seconds over Mauricio Quero. Uh, Mauricio's gotten into this second place, but he's not been able to respond to David's incredible speed we've seen this season and seasons past. Doesn't seem like Hermer can either, because ever since Hermer got overtaken by the 79, he's fallen nearly four seconds behind the second place car. In fact, he might be under threat from Soroy, because the number 19 is uh, within a second of him now. Yeah, ever since Firmer got overtaken by Caro, he put up a good fight against Mauricio, but now he's got, he's, he's just continued to fall back. He wasn't able to stay in that toe. And after Soroy got past Sights, he's been able to move forward quite a bit. Going down to the battle for 19th, Quinn looks like he's got it over Sebastian. That was another slipstream maneuver. Just using that toe down the long, long straight. And don't forget, Sebastian's still dealing with a little bit of right front wing damage off of the Wall of Champions uh, when he clipped that. That's a good point. I'm surprised he hasn't pitted either yet. Because we are within that pit window. It really ought to come in. Maybe get a spare wing on it and get it going once again. Everybody's yeah, starting see it. to spread out a little bit now, though. You can see it with that camera angle there. It was buckled up just a little bit. Not Must not be too uncomfortable for him, though. He might not even be aware that he's got the damage. True. Because you can't see that wing. David Holland can see a whole lot of nothing in front of himself as well, because, well, there's <laughs> no lap traffic for the time being. And he is still leading this race smoothly and cleanly, just rifling off the laps his quickest so far at a 29.9. Let's see if that is the quickest we've had so far. In fact, it uh, might be the only lap under 130 right now in the race. I think it... Yes, it is. Wow. I, I want to say as well, has Carroll closed in just a little bit on Holland? Ooh, ooh, big, big damage here on Wayne Palovich. What happened ooh, here? Pit this entry, it looks like. Entry. Overshot the left turn here. Oh, no, locked it up. Oh, that. <laughs> well, now we know why they have those tires there. I, I would not expect that that's typically a place that gets hit. But, I mean, safety's there for a reason. And unfortunately for the 780, he uh, bumped into the rubber and then has to come down and take a new nose on that car. You can see quite a bit of time on his pit stop before he's able to get going once again. Three, all pretty much equidistant from one another. Interesting to note that David Holland has lost a little bit of time to Kero. About half a second. So yeah, and especially, lap, especially two tenths on the last lap there. And it wasn't, doesn't seem like much of a drop in pace. It's a 30.1, which he did the lap before. Or no, that's Kero's time. Excuse me. So let me look. It's a 30.3 for David Holland compared to the 30.1 for Kero. Holland might have a little bit of help here. He's got Tyler Gore ahead of him. Lap traffic slipstream on the straightaway. Yeah, this should speed him up a little bit. And it was a 30.5 on lap 14 for Holland as well. So is he taking it easy now? Or is he got some sort of actual issue? I wonder if may he could have damaged the under tray potentially. Very strange development. If Holland is lacking pace, I, I assume we'll know soon, uh, soon enough because we'll start to see a pattern there. But they're starting to get to the end of the pit window at this point. You should see more and more of the drivers in. Our highest pitter currently is Kevin Santana, Holland's actually going just in. ahead of Verity. Yes, indeed, our leader in pit lane now. 
Nero did screen. follow and he closed up quite a bit as well. Yeah, that, that was, was a good pit entry. I was wondering if Holland was going to feel comfortable enough to take a little bit of optional repair if he had if he had to, but after that pit entry by Kiero, I don't think I would if I was him. I don't know if I... unless it's too bad. Yeah, at this point, it's a big risk. Of course, we don't know if it's damaged, and no tires. No tires for the number 18. So he hops back out there and keeps going. Sites, Basa, Galupo both stayed out, so they're going to inherit first and second place. Caro, he looks well for... Whoa! And Caro is just behind the wrecking Mitchell Green. What happened there? Was there contact? I think there was. There was actual contact between the cars. I think Caro got away with it. Let's take a look at the replay. And this was just a, a little case bit of, of tire time. bobble. Yep. Yeah, yeah, making contact. Oh, oof. and and green got the worst of it. Just trying to merge into traffic, and unfortunately, the zipper did not interlock. So that means that David Holland is now our highest pitter. Kero, who lost about a half a second in those pit stops. Looks like some of that came from the pit stop itself because he was about eight tenths slower. Greg Seitz now in. So our new leader is going to give that back to Holland. So will Basilupo, who is in. McDonald as well. David McDonald going in from uh, third there. Does Sites maybe risk taking tires? Or does he go with just fuel? I don't think we've seen anybody take tires. No tires for the 74, yeah. I think this is the end of the pit window. Josh Daniels also in. Mark Ponick. Just waiting on David Blackwood and David A. Bear. And that will be everybody in and out. And we'll have a better picture Sites returns in third. Now, Sites was not there before, so he's jumped Hermer in the pit stops, and that is because Hermer was two seconds slower. Two seconds slower, and he's just going to be... He, yeah, he finds himself just about a car length behind Sites now. Now, it looks like, if I'm not mistaken, are these teammates? They do appear to be. Could be on sister teams, but regardless... Uh, these are two who won't want to hold each other up too much. Greg Seitz at about eight tenths of a second behind Kero now. And it looks like Mitchell Green has taken a tow. I'm trying to check and see if that was just from the damage from before or something new that happened. Oh, uh, it looks like a big wreck for Mitchell Green. I don't know if we won it or not, but uh, heading into turn four, he found the wall. So his day is done. Yeah, Seitz and Hermer uh, running next to it, running right in line right now with each other. They are uh, on a team, Rust Racing Steel. And remember, they are actually second place, or Rust Racing Iron, sorry. They're actually second place in the team standings, just one point behind Vantage Azuro. If they can use a little bit of uh, teamwork here, they might be able to rally themselves up uh, an extra spot and have a really good day. Well, third and fourth, I would think, would be pretty. Yeah, already be having a great day. Yeah. <laughs> so if they just stay put and don't endanger one another, then they've got a good haul in terms of the points championship. 16 more minutes to do so. We ride on board with the helmet cam of Greg Seitz. And through the field. Unfortunately, a lot of our battles have split up here at the end. But the good thing, well, at least for the viewers, not necessarily for the drivers, is that this is a track that has danger lurking at every corner, quite literally. So I don't think this race is over by any means. Looking at the gap that uh, now that everything is pretty much settled back through to normalcy, Holland, that ha the gap that Holland has over Caro, looks like 
everything he lost on track in the laps leading up to pit entry, he gained back uh, with that great pit stop by Holland, uh, about half a second uh, that he gained. Now it's about 5.1 difference. So obviously this is going to, at least looks like that Mauricio is going to try and keep him honest in this. Now, one thing I want to take a look at now that we've got all the pit stops done, who's our biggest mover here today? I do see eight positions gained by Raymond Day from 14th to 6th. Looks like it might be Ty Gore. Now, I'm, I can hear Bill Zahn watching and I was going to say. Screen. Yeah. <laughs> he, he did not qualify. Didn't qualify. <laughs> so, 36 to 18th. Uh, we haven't had that great of an attrition, so he's had to, uh, to pass some people, whether they had spins or whatever. Uh, it, it has to have been on track. Unfortunately for Thor, he's going to have some company here, because here comes Matt Quinn. There goes Quinn taking into 19th. Thurman taking what I think might be a second pit stop here. Yeah, I believe this, this might be his first for uh, fuel mostly. I think he came in for mostly just damage on the first one. Yeah, uh, that, that looks to be the case. As far as our DNFs, as we take a look at the battle between Seitz and Hermer continuing the sort of battle, uh, we've lost Sebastian Crew, Eduardo Gach, James David, Christopher Richards is out of the race. Matthew Gunderson is taking repairs, but he's been in there for over 20 minutes. I don't think he's returning. Same thing with Daniel Cranefoos with a long, uh, lengthy repair. Mitchell Green is our latest with Don Lee and Wayne Pavlovich also uh, out of this thing. Right on board. We're watching there from sites looking back at Hermer. Now we're glancing at David Holland once more. It has extended. It was five seconds. Now it's up to seven between Holland and Carroll. With 13 minutes to go. This is our leader there on screen, just rifling off the laps. Yeah, that gap between Holland and Carroll really opened up in the last couple of laps. Holland has found a lot of speed. Not good news for those who are looking to try and chase him down. He's already got one victory this season. But it looks like he may make it a back-to-back -back at the very start. I mean, look at the gap on screen. Just it, not even coming into the picture. Carol yeah, he never showed up. Can't see the gap on screen. It's so big. Watch from Carol's helmet cam now. Let's see. He's going to get on to the front stretch. No, can't even see the leader. He's gone. He's somewhere in the distance. So just a dot on the screen at the very end of the straight. So with that said, let's give a run through on some of the field and give you an update on who's had what happened to them. We talked about Holland there up in the lead. He's taken the pole, and though he got passed momentarily with a poor start, he certainly made up for it for in the rest of this race. Quero, who had to try and get back forward a little bit as well. He qualified third and then eventually got into second place after some fighting. Now he's pulled away and got himself some breathing space. Nobody around him just putting the laps down. Greg Sykes, I'm sure he wants more than a third place. He's one position off of where he was last race here in third. Could be two positions off because the, key, the driver behind him is his teammate Sam Hermer in the number 11. Half a second back, but from what it looks like, he might just be playing the team game. He might just be hovering behind Greg now that the pit stops are done and letting them try to get to the finish. Basigalupo rounds out our top five currently. He started in eighth. He's up three spots, but he's another one in no man's land. Five seconds behind fourth and three seconds ahead of the next car back. Nick? Yeah, behind them we have another bit of team play. It's not Seitz and Hermer. It's uh, Raymond Day and Rod Clenard back in sixth and seventh, and they are not playing just as well uh, as the two up front, they're side by side right now going into the final chicane. And I believe that is, uh, that's Clenard getting a round day there for sixth. And really deep into that turn is Raymond Day. Oof, that did not help him. 
Fennard's still doing his best to get back up to his fourth place starting position there. Uh, so that's going to move Day down. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, behind them, that's uh, Day's little mistake there. That's going to help David Serra uh, at least get a little bit closer uh, back in eighth. Uh, David McDonald in ninth, uh, still just quite a bit of a buffer back. And Alex Guyon, he's moved into the top ten. Uh, shout out to him. He's another big mover today. Started back in 17th. Had a little bit of a spin from Stephen Verity. And I think, did he touch the wall? I'm trying to double check here. Oh, he did actually have a little contact. This was in Lapingle for the number four. This is about 60 seconds ago. Let's see if we can find the replay. Thought at first, and he's actually going to take a pit because of this. Yeah, here we go. So this is going to be into the hairpin, which should be the next corner as we ride on board. This is going to look silly, Nick, but this is so easy to do in these cars. It really is. We'll see him come through here. Just a little bit of a lockup. Might have been a little bit of reaction to that. That might have thrown him off. Yeah, I think you're right. And since then, he's in pit lane. It didn't look like he touched his suspension. Maybe we just didn't see it on his screen. And he's actually taking tires right now. Yeah, maybe that just a bizarre. little on the left front. Yeah, he did take tires. Not sure. I'm not sure why you take tires with 10 minutes to go at this point. Unless he's just going for, like, fastest lap or something out there. <laughs> That was right in front of Blackwood that he was coming out. That was four positions, so David Blackwood sneaking through to get into 19th place. That uh, includes Basigalupa, who's actually behind him right now. That's not four position, but Lucas is in fifth. He doesn't want to mess around with these lapped cars. Yeah, there we go. Nicely done there by Verity, just trying to get out of everybody's way. Yeah, Basigalupa really, really... Praying for a good day here. He finished 31st last week at Zandvoort. He uh, got to feel great to be back in the top five for him. Absolutely. Third place is really the only battle. Uh, I say battle with big air quotes next to me uh, between Seitz and Hermer. I I just get the feeling that, that Hermer is really not on the attack here. I mean, it could be wrong. He could be... He could be pushing as hard as he can, and he just can't keep up with sights. But I've seen him gain a couple times in the slipstream and not go for it. So uh, my, my instincts are saying this is this is a, a flying formation. Yeah, Hermer needs the points a little bit more. I wouldn't be surprised if he was winding up for a last lap uh, attempt. But at the same time, you don't want to make that attempt in the, the last chicane and wipe both of them out. Sights finished second last week, so uh, he's seven points more than Hermer in the standings. But... Uh, also, a lot of team championship implications uh, with them finishing well. So, of our 28 drivers who are still running, we've only got 18 left on the lead lap. The speed of David Holland has certainly caught quite a few of them, and there's still more yet for him to try and overtake before this is all said and done. We watch the number 74 continue to lead the number 11 around this track. Tyler Gore is currently our last driver on that lead lap. And Holland is just probably about a second and a half behind. You know, Joe, we, moment, we watched moments ago Bastigalupo have a little problem. That has really allowed Rod Klarner and Raymond Day to close in on him for fifth place. They, don't, they have a little bit of a cushion still, but remember, teammates back there, Klarner and Day, they're going to be working together to, to reel in the 84 of Bastigalupo. Yeah, they could potentially slingshot if they wanted a little extra speed. It all depends if they're that close on pace or not. So they come down the rowing lake. Yeah, Rod Clenard with a gap of about one second. That's enough to feel a little bit of the effects. I don't. It's obviously not enough for him to try and make an attack down here into the wall of champions. This is going to get spicy here. I think the biggest thing you got to worry about if you're Bassett Lupo is just ignoring the rear view mirror right now because that is not going to help you out when you have teammates working together to catch you and put you back to seventh. But a little bit deep into turn one there went Raymond Day, it looked like. He's struggled in a couple turns, I've noticed. Yeah, that seems to be a bad habit of his. 
Boy, if if somebody could teach me how not to look in your mirrors, you need to tell me because that is probably <laughs> one of my cardinal sins. It's just I cannot stop looking at the the F3 box of the mirror when I I'm getting chased. You just gotta turn it off. <laughs> yeah, pro that's probably the the pluck your eye out method. A post-it note or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> down the back stretch along the river. It is coming down. Clenard a tenth quicker this half of the lap. It's down to nine tenths of a second now. Make it eight tenths of a second. So oh, he's starting to quicker. feel it. Yeah. This is going to be telling here. Uh, don't need to go to it, but Owen McLaughlin has ended his race. He's come in for a pit stop for unknown reasons. Oh, and we got a pass for third. Seitz is actually pulling over and letting Hermer by. Looks like some communication between the two to coordinate that cleanly. Yeah, but why now? With what, about two laps to go, three laps to go? That's very weird timing. So back to that battle for fifth. We'll try and investigate, see what happened with third place and Hopefully we'll get to talk to them post-race to try and understand the strategy here because they're certainly not chasing anybody at this point. This is Rod Clenard that you see trying to catch the number 84. They're at the lead of this trio. In fact, he's got it down now to eight tenths of a second once again. Yeah, this is becoming a two-car race. Uh, Raymond Day continues to fall back a little bit out of the picture here. Clenard, though... He's becoming more and more into the picture and bigger and bigger in Basigalupo's rearview mirror. You can see them weaving to try to break the slipstream. And that slipstream is going to be powerful enough, I, I have to say. If he gets a good exit out of Lapingle, this looks like it could be a slam dunk from Rod. And now Basigalupo has the decision. How aggressively does he offend here? He knows if he falls back to sixth, seventh place is going to be the next that he might end up with Raymond Day behind him, but... He's got to be careful. Really desperate for points here. He probably already used the drop week at Zanfort. Down to the inside. He is going to go defensive at least. So he's not going to lay down, but he weaves back. So Clenard, maybe Clenard's not as good as in a straight line here. Oh, all up on the curbs there, Basigalupo. That's really going to help Clenard. It did indeed. He's got it down to a car length. He pokes his nose out a little bit, but a slight defensive maneuver from Lucas Basagalupo keeps him at bay. Oh, and a slide, a slide into the second part. Oh, Clenard catches it, and it costs him some time. Raymond Day back into the picture. We ride on board with him. He's got a great view of, view of this. Yeah, his teammate there makes another mistake. And that means that he could find himself getting up into P6. Let's see. Off along the back stretch on the river. They'll stretch apart. So nobody really gaining here in this portion of the track. I think I have an answer as to why Hermer and Seitz have changed positions. Because ever since Hermer has gone by, Seitz has dropped to 1.7 seconds. So they decided the team game is more important. Kermer was quicker, and they let him through. Oh, oh, Raymond Day has gone around. Just barely nudges the wall. Oh, that's not barely that's a nudge. It. That's a wheel completely gone. What a way for the Club West driver to end things. Right when he was getting back into the picture, he had David Soroy behind him as well. He wanted to join in on the fun. That might have been just enough to uh, get him a little distracted out of the pingle. Uh, second car we've seen goose it too hard in that slow hairpin. This time, way too much damage to continue. So Raymond Day is now in pit lane and has retired. That is a real shame. Our leader in the meantime, should take the white flag next time through, and he's got about four and a half seconds. So Caro's kept him honest, and he's brought the gap down slightly, but this has certainly not been enough for Mauricio to really challenge David Holland's incredible speed. And Holland has some lap traffic ahead of him, and he's got four seconds to play with. Uh, he's going to be managing the gap here, uh, I would believe, on this last lap. 
Just trying to bring it home cleanly and get two wins in a row to start the season. So back down to fifth place. This isn't over even though they've lost day. Clenard and Basigalupo within about a half a second of one another. We've right on board with Rod right now. Looking forward. They've got, actually, well, David Saroy caught them. When did this happen? He sure benefited from uh, the spin right in front of him. Well, that with is Raymond Day, but yet, yeah. He must have just been slowly chipping away. Just we were so focused on that battle, we did not notice. White flag is already waved for Holland, and he's on the final lap now. This is our closest fight within the top 10. Unless you count the fight for top 10 itself, because mm -hmm. Santana and Legault might actually have themselves a little bit of an exchange here on the final lap. In fact, Legault was taking a little look to the inside for that 10th position, but... Oh, and Santana is in the pits. Did he not fuel it enough? Was he one lap shy? Oh, that is a shame. He was having a good run for a top 10, but we have to go to our leader because essentially one more breaking zone to go for the number 18, still holding that gap stationary at four and a half seconds. The toe of Matt Quinn is gonna pull him aside, but he's not even gonna try and lap Matt Quinn. He knows he's got the buffer and he's not gonna risk the car. So down into the final chicane and out of the other side, David Holland is gonna be your winner here today at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Canada. Mauricio Caro coming across the line as well. He will finish second. Back in third and fourth down the back stretch. It looks like Hermer gonna have it over Seitz. So wow, the teammate for Greg Seitz showing that he's got the pace as well. But if they can't either of them get the team's or the driver's championship, the team's championship is looking very good with a third and a fourth for the Team Rust. Was it Team Rust Iron? How about P6? Clenard and Saroy at the line. Bless David Saroy actually got him in a photo finish there. Let's look at the replay on that one because we have no battles behind them. And this Saroy. was Saroy putting pressure on. He must have pushed a ton in the last two laps of this race to close the gap get enough slipstream and sneak through on the chicane. He surprised us. I think he definitely surprised Rod Clenard. And then from there on out, I do not see any battles. Yeah, because it looks like all of our lap cars are too far apart as well. So that is going to be it. And it's going to take ourselves to a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing channel. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. Stick around for all the upcoming races here on your screen.
Welcome back to Circuit Gillesville News. This track in Montreal put on a good show here for the PRL F3 series, but it was David Holland taking the second victory out of two rounds, and instead it was Mauricio Quero who came home in second, making up for his loss on the podium last time. Samuel Hermer also managing to get himself on the podium, making David Holland the only one to be on there twice this time. Then it's Greg Seitz who finished in fourth today with Lucas Basigalupo in P5 climbing up three spots. David Soroy right at the line taking sixth place over Rod Clenard who winds up in seventh. David McDonald in eighth place for him, Alex Guyon. It was very quiet, but it was a quiet run from 17th to 9th. Really didn't watch and see where he got most of those. I'm assuming attrition helped. And then rounding out your top 10, it is Olivier Legault. Back in 11th, after a 29th place finish last week at Zandvoort, Josh Daniels. He's going to be very happy moving up seven spots from 18th. Mark Ponick going to finish 12th, 13th, and 14th. Go to Kevin Santana and Matt Quinn. They'll be the last drivers on the lead lap. Then one lap down, uh, Sheldon Rosenbaum in 15th. 16th goes to Tyler Gore, David Blackwood in the 75 machine, 17th. Stephen Verity, despite all the trouble he had tonight, he's still going to be able to salvage an 18th place. Owen McLaughlin, Lauren Sebastian, both having trouble as well late in the race. That'll round out your top 20. Last car one lap down was David A. Barron, 21st. Then you got Andy Spicer, two laps down, 22nd. Three for Raymond Day with his late race DNF. And Tyler DeZube, 24th, four laps down. Had to get some repairs early, and that set him well back. Mitchell Ian Green, I believe, was a DNF, too. Uh, Paul Clist did see the checkered flag in 25th, and Brett Thurman did as well in 27th. Then from there on down, you get into the DNFs. Let's head over to our winner for this race, and that was David Holland, two for two. But let's go to the start, David. It seemed like it was a little awkward. What what happened that cost you the lead there at the beginning? Yeah, hey, Joe. It definitely was awkward. Uh, we don't normally do rolling starts in this series, um, and I have never led a rolling start on iRacing, at least, before. Um, and I didn't expect the green to be thrown that early. I thought I was going to have control a little bit further down the straight. So it got me by surprise, definitely, and uh, allowed Mauricio out there in front. You know, to be honest, I, we didn't even catch that either. After all my time covering this, it didn't even hit me that uh, we were supposed to have that standing start. Uh, well, that explains the awkwardness. Still, you managed to get it back, and then you managed to pull away. But at some points, we saw that you were being caught by Mauricio. Were you managing your pace? Were you keeping it safe because of the, the, the walls on this track kind of being notorious for collecting people? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was pushing it there at the beginning, pulled out a good lead, like you said, and then uh, the track was a little bit hotter than normal, um, so that extra temp just made it kind of slippy, slippery, a little bit sketchy. Uh, so yeah, I was just kind of managing it, playing it safe, and uh, putting a cruise control there. So it seems like there's a, a bit of uh, masochism here for the schedule of, for the F3 cars, because you've had Zandvoort, which certainly took out a lot of people. We've had Montreal, which thankfully didn't take out as many as we expected, but still a tough track. And now you're going to Lime Rock Park. What's going on here? Are we, are we going to have uh, the ring next after this? <laughs> I don't know. It would only make sense though. Huh? Yeah, it's definitely a very tough schedule to, to start this season off. I have no idea how Lime Rock is going to go. I mean, we might have to put downforce on it just to keep the thing from ramping off of that uh, uphill run. So we'll see. It'll definitely be interesting. Yeah, going to be a race of survival again. Yeah, I have no doubt in a race of avoiding some traffic. Well, that was our leader and winner, David Holland, taking the victory here today. And unfortunately, looks like uh, Kero and Hermer have decided not to join us. So I believe we're going to wrap it up with a big thank you to our sponsors for this series. Starting off with Ninja Trader. Make sure and check them out. They can be found at ninjatrader.com if you want to see what they can do for you. Also, to Butt Kicker, their sim products can be bought at thebuttkicker.com. All kinds of awesome stuff for your sim rig from them. And, of course, to iRacing for putting us on IESN once again. Thank you goes out to the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcast. And they're listed here on your screen. Additional thanks go to June Lalonde. It provides our wonderful music. You can see the screen for how to get a hold of more for great work. And thanks to the team today, Nick, Sean, and Dougie. 
like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. Also, check out our social media. Our Twitter is at GSR Channel. Facebook is Global Sim Racing Channel. And Instagram is GSRC underscore Graham. As we mentioned, heading over to Connecticut for our next race, just to hop across the border. That'll be at Lime Rock Park. And Thursday, April 2nd at 9 p.m. Eastern. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. See you on the track.